welcome to another special edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm going to take a look at some of these genuinely approachable pencil puzzles that are being published on Discord at the moment. So if you want to play these puzzles, and I really recommend you have a go at them, just log into our Discord. It's completely free. And every day there is a new uh, pencil puzzle published uh, by one of the world's great setters of pencil puzzles. So, so what more could you could you ask for? So we've got Eric Fox is the one actually I'm about to try. Uh, we've got Shy, Jovial, Tiganis, Freddy Hand. I hope I'm not missing anyone out, but I think it's the five of them who basically take turns uh, to create these little these little gems for us to have a go at. Uh, so let's have a look at this one. It's Eric Fox. I think it's the next in the series. The last one I did on video was, I don't know what this one was called, uh, Meandering Numbers. And I definitely did that one in a video because I found it quite difficult to to follow. Um, what's that one above that, actually? Let me, uh, no, Nurikabi, I remember doing that. Okay, this one is called Unequal Length Maze. Uh, not a puzzle form I'm familiar with. I mean, obviously I've done, looks like it's some sort of loop drawing puzzle. Draw a non-intersecting path through the centers of all empty cells, starting with the S and finishing on the G. No two consecutive straight lines in the path may be of the same length. Right, so I'm just, I'm just looking at the example puzzle there. And I guess that first length is of length one. Then it goes to a length two piece, then a length one piece, then a length three place piece, etc. So we've just got to make sure we have, we don't have the same number of lengths in consecutive, after consecutive turns or after a turn. That is a weird thing. With four minutes, good grief, this is a difficult puzzle. Most of the um, genuinely approachable puzzles are sort of one minute, two minute affairs. So this one, this one is going to challenge us, I suspect. Let's have a go. Um, I've got no idea how to do this. I suppose if I've got to visit all squares, then all corners have got to be, all corners and all sort of tunnels have to be used, don't they? And that creates more uh, tunnels and corner opportunities. That's a corner. Right, if I turn up there, that's gonna turn and then that's gonna cause a problem. I'll, I'll, I'll try and do these as swiftly as I can see them. Um, but then I'll talk through them at the end if I think that there's anything interesting to say. Um, now again, if that turns, that's not going to work. So that's got to do, that's, that looks quite potent actually, because now I'm, I've got to create a path, which means I've got to extend all this. Um, what have we got going on in the rest of this? Oh, that can't turn. Well, that's going to be a problem. That can't join. Ooh. Okay, I'm slightly nervous about what I've just done there, but I think I think it looked correct. If that turns, that's not going to work. So that's right. So this is, I think, I think this is forced up to here. That's creating a corner. I don't know what this is doing. I'm not sure I know what this is doing either. I know that, oh, actually, this can't turn here because that they'll be of both of the same length. So we've got to extend down again. Now it might be possible for them to turn. I don't know. That's got to turn up. Two, one, that would be a three. And then it could be a two after that. Oh, that can't turn or that'll be bad. So that's a big long strip. That can't turn. There's a corner there I've just noticed. Ah, now don't create a loop. So that's interesting. Um, can that join there? <laughs> Maybe. I've got very little intuition about how to do this puzzle. I have to say I'm apologizing profusely for this ineptitude. Um, okay, how do we do this then? What is it that's restricting anything in this neck of the woods? That did that, that would have to, con oh no, that can't join there. That would, ah, that's, I don't know how to do that, but that's broken, I can see it, I can see it's broken now. That's gonna have to do that. Um, that can't turn, so it's got to continue. So that drops down again. That can't join with its friend here. Aha, that's how it works. Um, what's going on here then? something oh that can't join to that sorry i'm getting i'm so slow at this um 
that can't join to that. Well, that would be an enormous loop. So does that, oh, and that can't join to that. Everything's going wrong here. That can't join there. So, I, ah, phew, good grief. That was appalling, absolutely appalling. I'm so sorry. I have no clue how to approach this properly. Um, let me just uh, delete all, erase it all, and let's just go again. And we'll set, I'll, I'll sort of explain what I was noticing. So the first thing I did was just to note that because all the white cells have to be filled, we can make some fairly basic deductions right at the start. Anything that's in a tunnel, I've got to complete. And I got to something like this, I think. Um, not a million miles away from this. And then really it was a case of just noticing that, for example, that is a problem. Because what's gonna to happen to this? It's gonna create a loop. I'm not even sure if I made that deduction, but that's certainly true. No, it's not. That's got, to, oh, hang on, what on earth am I doing? I've already gone wrong. Why have I turned this? I don't know. Maybe it was, or maybe that was it, the point. I cannot go down here because that creates uh, two one cell segments there. So this has to extend. Now that creates a tunnel. That creates a tunnel. So this is all forced. That's a corner. Um, now, let's try and pick away at this again and see if we can do it with a little bit more structure. Um, what is the problem with that? Yeah, that, that, that segment's impossible, isn't it? Because now I have to get to this square, and to do that, I have to do that and that, which creates runs of incorrect or like-minded lengths. So you have to do that, you have to do that. This starts to create this pattern that comes out, this pattern that comes out. Um, now, now, yeah, it's just, I think it's just a puzzle where you have to get very used to looking at things the same length. This is of length two, this is a currently of length two, so cannot stop there, so it must continue creating another corner. Again, that's of length two, that's of length two, so that must continue. Now we can't join up these because that's gonna create a small loop. So we must turn there and then this would be of the same length, so must continue. We've got a corner up here, which is a bad thing. Um, not necessarily a bad thing, but yeah. And now, ooh, do, 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 hang on a minute. Well, that, I can see that can't join to that because that's going to create three lengths of line two of length, three lines of length two, all connected to one another. But I don't think I see why that can't just join here. I can't remember what the actual solution was. So it's weird. Even as I'm playing through this again, I don't feel that I'm improving very much as a, as a solver of it. Um, well, uh, yeah, okay. The point I think about this being impossible is that that makes that impossible. And if that's, in, because if, if we do that, we, we're forced to do that. So we have to, in fact, take that and that as a result. Um, now, what have we done up here? I'm not sure. We have got, uh, is there something we can do? Oh, this is of length two, this is of length two, so we must continue, that creates a corner. If we join that corner up, we get two twos connected. It's a beautiful puzzle, Eric. It really is clever, this. It's very clever, but if you're like me and new to it, um, tricky. Now, does that turn there is the question I'm now asking myself. No, it doesn't, because that would force this situation. So it cannot turn that way. It must turn this way, which forces that to be a corner. Now, I don't know. There's, there's probably a way of seeing immediately whether this continues or not. That can't turn. Oh, no, that, would be, that can turn down. Ah! <laughs> oh, no! Um... Can we say anything about what's going on over here? Yes, that can't continue because that will create. Yeah, okay, I just have to keep looking. That must continue. I can't remember what happened in the bottom left. Um, yeah, you just have to keep interrogating 
the existing line segments you've got. Yeah, I can now see that's impossible. I'm just incredibly bad at this. Incredibly bad. It's really embarrassing. Um, and then that's that's for oh, that's forced to finish this. Don't create a loop, so you've got to force this down. Um, don't create a two connecting to a two, so that comes across. That must do that because we mustn't create a loop and that finishes it. I actually think that second go through it was just as appallingly bad as the first. Um, but anyway, that is one of the puzzles ticked off. Let's go on. We've got, a, I think this is a shy puzzle, shy, shy put at the moment because of the Christmas <laughs> connotations, presumably. What's this puzzle? It's called rectangle, rectangle slider. I've never heard of this one either. Okay. Uh, I'll try and do the read the rules and then we'll look at the example. Move some black squares one by ones and not necessarily all of them so that each group of orthogonally adjacent squares is rectangular in shape and no square is left isolated as a one by one. A square may only move in one straight line vertically or horizontally. Squares paths may not cross each other, other squares or other square starting points. Squares containing clues must be moved exactly the indicated number of cells. Oh, goodness me, this sounds like it's some sort of sliding tile problem. Let's look at the... So this is the, puzzle, the example puzzle, and this is the example solution. So in this... Yeah, that 4 has moved upwards, hasn't it? It's moved upwards to there, where it cannot be left on its own, because it has to be not a 1 by 1 at the end. So it's actually somehow they've moved other things to create a two by two here. This one has moved out, leaving a one by one behind it, which cannot be on its own. So that's also moved out. Wow, I, I don't really know what's going on with this. The, I think the only way to do it is to kind of be to click and play. I can see that one's got to move. That two's got to move up. I've got one by ones here, which I thought was against the rules. I can't get anything in there. So perhaps that's forced. Uh, oh, I've, this is not rectangular. Ah, three. No, that's not going to work. I think that three probably has to go up here. Maybe that has to join it. I've got no clue what I'm doing again here. That one, or that one may... Oh, I see, yes, I could do that. Now it's all looking quite good at the top. That. Oh, okay. Well, I have finished that, but that was very much more by luck than judgment. Let's erase the answer uh, and think about this a bit more logically. Um, so this four, I could see immediately, couldn't go left. So I think that is definitely forced. This two then can't go right, so that's forced. Then I asked whether this could take a black square, but I couldn't see how to move a black square into it. So I knew I had to force this two to, into not being a square and I, the only way I could see of doing that was like this now you can see we've got this awkward triomino here which is definitely not the right shape we've got this three now I, I thought about moving that three over there but I couldn't see how this was going to work because this looks like an S definitely doesn't look like a rectangle and although I could move this thing around I couldn't see how I was going to... I couldn't move the zero. I, I couldn't see how that was ever going to be possible. So I moved it up there. Now, um, now I couldn't see how this one could ever go here and join to anything. So I presumed it had to go up. And then you can see that that, that actually quite nicely works with the four and the one to create a bigger rectangle. This three needs a friend. That's only available from here. And then you're left with fi fixing the triomino without being able to move this cell. So you can move that one across. I think that was the solution. Everything is in a rectangle. Everything has moved. Interesting puzzle. Quite a long rule set. Not sure whether I'm a fan of that one. Um, yeah, not sure. Quite liked it. Did I get that? How quickly did I do it? I think I probably was less than a minute. I don't know. Let's have a look. Center. Oh, this will be jovial. <laughs> jovial is Santa all at the moment. Uh, and this puzzle is called Double Back. I don't know what that one is either. Good grief. Okay, the rules. Uh, draw a non-intersecting, non-branching loop. So we've got to draw a loop through the centres of all cells, which passes through each region exactly twice. Oh, I have done one of these before. Yes. 
I might even have done one of these on the channel before. I'm not sure. Yeah, but there's a big tip for these puzzles. If you look at the regions in the example puzzle, count how many times a region's boundary is crossed. So because there has to, it has to be entered exactly twice, there must be four cuttings of the boundary. And that is normally a very good tip for these puzzles. Let us see if it is in this instance. So we've got to go to all cells. So again, a good tip with these puzzles is always to put the corners in. Um, yeah, so how do I, if I go up here, I can't cross, I've got to cross, I've got to cross too many boundaries. So I've got to do that. We'll talk about this more in a minute. I've got to do that, that, I'm creating a loop, aren't I? So this, I think, is all sort of forced stuff. I've ah, Now I've got to pick up the rest of this in one go. So that's forced. I've got my four boundaries in this region. So I've got to pick up the whole of the rest of it. It's going to be something like this. Uh, that, don't create a loop, a small loop. That's, I mustn't create a small loop. That's forced. That's effectively forced, I think. We've got to do that. Don't create a loop. How many times have I come into this bottom bit? Uh, oh, I see four because I've come in it, come to it from the inside. I mustn't create a loop at the bottom. So I think this is just for, for forced. Yeah. So actually, not too bad. One one minute three seconds with a bit of chatting. Um, but hopefully you could see how absolutely crucial um, that little tip was let me see what the timing was for that oh so i would have got i would have got you're not going to give me a sloth are you or a sloth but i would have got one if i wasn't talking i would have got one you meanies uh, anyway let's go back and just talk about how to do this so the key i think is literally to put the corners in because we're visiting every cell and now if you look at this top right cell remember what i said We've got to come in and out of this region. We've got to cut this boundary four times. Well, we can't cut it on the edges of the grid. So there are actually only four places where you can create cuttings of the boundary. So that pattern there is forced. Now, where do we go from here? Um, good question. We've got the same sort of consideration in this one by three. We've cut it once. We need to cut it another three times and the only available options are those and then it's simply a matter of loop maintenance we mustn't close the loop there can't do that so we've got to continue now this one needs to cut three times three more times so that's absolutely forced don't close that loop we've cut now look if you look at this uh, two by three rectangle we've cut it four times so we must cut it no more times but visit all its squares which forces this it's a very beautiful puzzle actually really very elegant indeed now oh yes this was nice as well look at this massive region we've got here we've cut its boundary all four times so now what we've, we're challenged with is we must finish this region we must collect all of its white squares without just using these loop ends that we've got um, so you can see all corners effectively can immediately be written in um, and every square needs to be visited so you can start just doing this just using corner logic and then you get here where you mustn't close the loop too early so that's forced that's forced don't close the loop don't close the loop don't close the loop all of this is forced now this two by two here we've got to we've got to cut its boundary four times again so again we can't do that and close the loop if we do that we can only ever cut it once more so that's not a that's not a a possible move so that's got to come straight through creating a corner that that and then it's just a matter of loop maintenance again it's lovely absolutely lovely i really think that is a super puzzle um so well done jovial um tis tier tig santus right this is tier ganus presumably with a puzzle called Bosnian road another puzzle i've never seen in my life um shade cells in the grid Oh, hang on. Shade cells in the grid that form a single closed non-branching loop. We've got lots of loops today. I love loops. That's great. Um, that cannot touch itself, not even diagonally. Okay, so we, basically we draw a snake. Uh, number clues are always unshaded and indicate how many shaded cells it sees orthogonally and diagonally 
from one to eight like minesweeper oh wow wow so this is like a minesweeper loop puzzle and we've got to do it in two minutes ten to be super super smart um so let's click on the link there oh hang on hang on i'm gonna to have to pause while i put this in the, in the window hang on okay hopefully that works it looks like it's in the window to me so let's go boom 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 all of these we were told were unshaded so let's unshade them all um this one you can't you're not going to be able given that this is a snake sh oh, in fact that one's forced isn't it silly simon um that's um, that's impossible that's impossible that is impossible in fact that's impossible yeah sorry that's impossible as well i'm not very good at this am i four there that's got to do something like this that's impossible that's whoops don't know what's going on at the top there oh good grief there's a five <laughs> whoops uh so that's all forced that's forced that's forced you can't go around the bottom there and create a loop that's now impossible so i think we've got to do something like that this three has only got one in it so that cell is impossible so it's probably oh and a six here hang on a minute and a seven here as well hang on i should be able to just visualize this it looks i mean i can see that as a possibility is it that or is there some other if we close there it's impossible to do six so yes okay it is that um oh I've, i think i've got three in that already so that's 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 forced this two has been done whoa okay so that's going to do a lot of damage that's impossible that's got to turn that's now impossible that's got to turn oh this six how many um one, two, three. It's got to be all of them, doesn't it? I think all of that is forced. Boom, boom, boom. Seven is going to look like a slither, a slitherling thing. So that's not going to work. That it's going to be. It's going to be either that or that, because I need an exit or an entrance. If it's that, it's going to break the four. I see. Wow, that's clever. Um, so now what's going on here i can't touch this that would close the four too early that's now forced the four over think that yes wow okay very very nice puzzle i'm just going to complete my greens because it looks a bit um it looks a bit like silverstone or something now um okay so what is going on with this puzzle let us delete everything and i'll explain what i was doing there so i think I think it is quite a good idea. I found it quite helpful to um, green all these in. Software is brilliant, by the way. Is this Swaroops software again? Really clever stuff. Um, it's because it's intuitive. I just thought that right click would be green, and it was. Um, now, if we look at, yeah, perhaps it would have been better to start with this five, because this five only has five cells next to it. So we could have started immediately like that. And because this is a snake that cannot touch itself, not even diagonally, we could actually draw in an awful lot of loop segments immediately like this. And then perhaps this four would have been the place to think about because the four can't do that because it's now got five cells around it. So in fact, this is now a wall and the snake must turn, which rules out these cells. Now, how are we going to get one more from this four clue? If it's this one, you can never get into this cell and out of it again. We're creating a loop here, not, not a snake that has ends. So it has to take one more and turn. Now it can't touch itself. Now this six has become forced. It's only got six more cells it, it can take, which creates a whole load more uh, green stuff. Um, so I think that would have been a better, more efficient start. But this one is very interesting because because of this thing about the, the, the loop not being able to touch itself, if the loop comes into this square, it's broken immediately. Where's its next cell? It's going to be a second cell around the one. So that is not a possible cell, and that immediately rules out this. Anything with a corner isn't going to work with the one. So you can see, actually, I think if you did a few of these puzzles, you would see that this sort of configuration is forcing you to take this cell. In fact, yeah, maybe that's what you do. 
the moment you see a one in a puzzle like this, you should do that, I think. And then you can, yeah, you should do that because none of those orthogonal cells with the one are ever possible without taking a second cell. If you try and take that, you'll have to take one of the others. So you can do that. And now it's very easy to see all of those three are out and you've got to do this. So again, we can do the same thing here, look, and now you can see immediately this one's impossible because that's going to cause the snake to touch itself. So you could, you could have, we could have forced all of that very quickly. Yeah, you could get very good at these, I think, um, with a little bit of practice. And it goes on from there. Uh, oh, the only other thing I will mention is that I could see that the seven had one gap in it. Um, and because the snake can't touch itself, arrangements like this are impossible. So what we're looking for is a slit, what I called a slither link three, or that's how I was thinking it in my brain. So it's something, you know, it's a big C shape that then goes one way or the other. So uh, by the time we got here, I could see that the C shape had to connect here. And that, uh, in fact, I'm going to have to show you this because I'm not going to make much, sen much sense otherwise. Um, right, this, this, what I didn't appreciate about this six is you can't connect this. If you, if you connect that up, all three of those are out and the six is impossible. I should have realized that instantly and didn't. So that forces those two things. And now this three, you can never come through the tunnel or, or the three will break. You'll have too many cells in it. So you have to do that. Now, now this three has effectively become a one, which means that cell's impossible, forcing that configuration. The six now needs another cell, so that's forced. Um, the two has already got its quota, so that's forced. Um, yeah, this was where it was. Now I could see, because of the, I need a C shape around the seven, that's not going to work. There are now an, an odd number of loop segments in this cul-de-sac, and you could never therefore attach this to anything. So that's never going to work, and that's never going to work. So you're always looking at these three these strings either like this or like this but look what happens if you do it like this the four breaks immediately because you have to put five around it to continue the loop and that took me a few seconds to see um, and once you do this obviously it's basically finished uh, you can't connect it yet um, can't connect it there this cell would connect the, the, the snake to itself so it's got to come down if you connect it now this four is not fulfilled, so you have to come one down, and that forces it to turn, and that forces it to finish. And I've done it again. So there we go. Did it a couple of times. Hope you'll forgive that. But the idea of these videos is to show people who maybe are not as familiar with pencil puzzles some of the tricks and the tips, if I know them. Um, what is this puzzle? Sashigani. I've heard of this, but I've, I don't know if I've ever done one of these. I certainly don't remember it. Trespassers William. <laughs> Who is Trespassers William? Trespassers William, somebody Bill? Trespassers? I have no clue. Is that Freddy? I've had to, oh, I've had Shy, I've had Jovial, I've had Tig, Tig Santos, and I've had Eric Fox. So maybe this is Freddy. I don't know. Freddy Hand, perhaps? I don't. I could be wrong. I don't understand how Freddy Hand relates to Trespassers William. <laughs> Sorry, Freddy, if it's you. Um, rules. Divide the grid into regions of orthogonally connected cells. Each region must be an L shape with a width of one cell. Arrows must lie at one end of an arrows must lie at one end of an L and point towards the bend. I think I'm going to look at the example in a minute. Circles must lie at the bend of an L, and if one contains a number, the L its inside must contain the indicated number of cells. Good grief. Okay. Are we dividing the whole grid? It looks like we are. The whole grid into L-shaped regions. Circles are always at the, the sort of dog leg. Arrows are always at an end, I see. And that's a region of size three and that's a region of size four. Well, I think I understand it. Um, that may not mean anything. Let's click that. Oh, it's in the right place. Yes. This was a corner, wasn't it? A circle. So something like that, I think, is forced. Oh, these are ends. OK, hang on a minute. So these are ends. So that's got to do at least that. That's an end. So that's got to turn. That's an end. Oh, that doesn't. Oh, so that must do, I must do that there, I think. I'm probably doing this entirely wrong, but I'm just going to do it the way I sort of feel like it 
ought to work. Don't create a Z pentomino, so something like this, I think, maybe. That, that, that. Ooh, got to create L's everywhere. L's everywhere. Make L's everywhere. So that's going to be another L of some sort. Um, that must be an L. Don't know how big that L is. Um, that must be an L of some sort. That's Oh, that could join to there. That could join to there. Oh dear, now it's all going to go wrong, isn't it? Um, so maybe we use the circles now. Okay, so it's a dog leg, so it's got to, yes, it's got to turn. So it's got to do that. Yeah, okay, that's, I think that that one is forced. Sorry, I just didn't see that. Uh, that one's got to do that. And that one also is therefore forced. Ah, now that one's now forced. That's got to be a f one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, that's got to be a corner. So I think that's got to do that. Ooh, something going on here that I don't quite understand. Um, oh, I was about to draw that in, but that that's wrong because that's that's at the corner. Oh, ah, right. So this has got to come up. This is at the corner, so it's got to do. It's got to look like that somehow, or yes, in fact, it has to look like that, or that's going to be broken. This thing, this is at the corner, so that's got, yes, okay, so that one's forced, that one's forced, that one's forced, that one's forced, that one's forced. Um, um, come on, how does this work? The six, obviously it's doing that in some way. So this one has to be part of a thingy. So I think that one's got to look like that, which means that one must go up and that must go up and that must go up. It's something like this, I think. That maybe does that. Yes, okay. Well, there's a little bit of uh, forcing it at the end, but not terrible. Well, probably terrible. 251, I don't know what I was meant to do that in. Let's have a look. 230, but I'm talking. So that's, a, that's another. It really is. I mean, I should get a sloth for that, shouldn't I, guys? Um, anyway, <laughs> let's go back to it. Um, let's click on that again, and we'll do it. It's a, I really like this puzzle, actually, as a way, as a, as a gap puzzle, because it sort of, it split it into two halves. So you had to sort of understand how the arrows work and understand how the circles work separately. And then in the end, you put them both together. So very, very nicely designed puzzle. Um, and I think the top was easier because once you realize, which I didn't immediately, that these are always sort of at the end of their L's, you can start to draw, you know, draw in a few things. You know, all of that, I think you can basically do like a slither link three around every arrow. And then you can see some shapes are starting to be fairly forced. You can see that's all being forced that's being forced might not know the length of it but we know it's doing something like this in fact that one's forced that one's forced and that's your first decision i think does this extend to the edge or does it not now if it extended to the edge you've isolated a domino which would be a bad thing in a puzzle where you need l shapes similarly if this came down to here you're isolating a square so i, I mean i could see that fairly clearly but i guess if you got quick at these that would be somewhere you'd be looking to really accelerate now here you can see this is clearly an end well you can't make an l like that that's going to be a wide pentomino so there's got to be a line in here and that means this is doing something like that that's doing something like that that line is forced I'm not sure if we can figure this all out yet you probably can but i'm just not clever or experienced enough to know how to quite finish that bit off but the bottom is very interesting you know, there's certain things you can see straight away, but this four, I think, if you, again, if you were experienced, you'd instantly realise that it must have a vertical strut to it, because it can't just be a horizontal line, and its horizontal strut is going to take it straight into a different clue. So it's forced to just be, now we know it's a tetromino, and this is the short leg, if you like, the only way of drawing it in is like that. The same thing, exactly the same thing happens there after this. So you can force this. Now, what I didn't realize, which I should have done immediately, is that now this 
can't never join to these circles because the circle should be at the dog leg. Um, so now you get something like that being forced and you can see that that's got to come up which forces the shape of the four. It's really beautiful actually. Very clever. That three is now utterly forced. That forces this, forces that. Uh, don't know if that's forced at the top. Um, this six is forced. That's three is forced. Yeah, and then I was really slow about this six. I mean, the six is doing that, isn't it? That 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 is very clear. But this is, I think, the cell we have to think about and whether it could do, ever do that. And it obviously can't, it leaves a domino behind. So it must be a tetromino, which forces the shape of the six, forces, well, I'm not, I, I, I drew that in when I, in the, in the sort of real run through, because I, I never really thought about that. But yeah, that's, that's forced. And now we've just got to make sure we, we finish it with, with L's. Yeah, interesting, very interesting indeed. Right, let's get back to it. What have we got now? Um, how many puzzles have I done? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we'll do a couple more. Um, I don't want the videos to be too long, these ones. I don't know how long is the video. No, it's only 36 at the moment. Have I done this one? No, I've just oh, I've just done that one. So let's do this one. What's this? Lits. Oh, I love lits. Um, okay, great. I, and I know what this is. So this is going to be, this should be quicker. Um, so we have to, it's by Eric, and we have to shade one tetromino of cells in each region so that all shaded cells form one orthogonally connected area. Two tetrominoes of the same shape may not share a bold border, counting rotations and reflections as the same, and no two by two region may be entirely shaded. It's quite a simple rule set, especially if you get used to these pencil puzzles. Um, but there, it really, for such a simple rule set, it does yield some amazing, amazing puzzles. And in fact, um, I did an absolutely incredible Litz puzzle in the Pyramid Puzzle Hunt we've got coming up on Patreon at the weekend. So let us think that was by a Spartacus. Um, anyway, let's see, how quickly do I have to do this? 145, I hope I'll be able to do that. We shall see, we'll click go. Is it, oh no, it's not in the right place. Oh, it just about is now. Tetrominoes, they're the things we need to do. That can't be gone in there. Those three have got to be in. Those four have got to be in, so those can't be in. That forces something at the bottom. Now that, 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 and that are all ruled out. That's ruled out. It would connect an eye to an eye. I will talk through this in a, in a minute if I manage to finish it. Um, now that's impossible. That's impossible. That's impossible. Uh, that's impossible. That's impossible. Okay, so that one gets forced. Okay, and we go to here. That's This has got to get out, so that's forced. It's an L, so we can never take either of those. It must be an I. That's out. That's out. This has not got to be an I, so this must... It must take that cell. Oh, I see, so it's forced. Okay, and now we've got some sort of connectivity question. I've got to connect this... Oh, I've got to get this out. Ah, so it's going to have to join to that somehow, or without using an R, ah, so maybe like that. And now I've got to join these up without using a T. Ah, oh, I can see. There we go. Right. So, got it done. Don't know if that time was any good. 118. But, le very, very beautiful puzzle. Let's just start with that. that. I mean, look at what you can do with a 5x5 five five grid and this simple rule set. You can create... It's just a beautiful... Uh, little sort of vignette of Litz rules. Now let's explain this slowly. So obviously tetromino regions we can fill in because every region contains a tetromino. Now remember the two by two rules. We can't ever create a two by two shaded region. That gives us some shading. Now the way I did it was I then looked at the next most small region which is this five cell region. Now I know that four of its cells, four of its connected cells, are shaded. So the middle three must be shaded. But look at this, uh, look at this region down here. I suppose that's another place we could think about. If we start here in this region, we're going to create a two by two uh, shaded region. So that's never possible. Same, same with this cell. Never possible. 
And now I've only got four cells left in this region, so I can fill it in. And if this was shaded, I create two eyes next to each other. So that now cannot be shaded, and that's shaded. Avoid a two by two. If you start shading here, you're going to create all sorts of two by two edges. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, and don't do that. And look, you get left with a three cell region here. Well, a tetromino is not a three cell region, so all of those get shaded. And now all you've got to do is avoid the fact that you mustn't connect an L to another L. So that can't be taken, and that forces an I. And now it gets very beautiful on the right hand side, because this region needs to connect to the rest of the shaded cells. So that's forced to be shaded. Now, if this was shaded, it would be an L connected to an L, so that's not shaded. If this was shaded, it would be an L connected to an L. Eric is just a master of puzzles like this. He really is. This is an I now. Uh, don't create two by twos. Don't create two by twos. We've still got to get this shaded region out, so that's forced, that's forced, that's forced, because it's a tetromino. That's now out. We've got an I here, so we can't take this. So this is now an L. Um, now, what do I do up here? Avoid a two by two, 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 leaving behind just four cells, avoid a two by two. And now we've just got to visualize how are we going to connect everything up together when we've only got two more tetrominoes to draw. First challenge is the bottom left region. How can we connect it to the rest of its friends? And the only place it can get to is this T tetromino. So this is going to have to come in, and this is going to have to come in. And now the only challenge is to make sure we join them together in a way that doesn't repeat a tetromino. So you can see an S is impossible. So we can't do that. That would be wrong. Um, and the only way of doing it, I think, is an L. And the same thing over here now. We still haven't connected this region to the rest of the grid. So we're going to have to connect this somehow to here without using a T. You can see a T would work. It would work in terms of connectivity, but it wouldn't work in terms of repeating. This is an L already, so that's not going to work. You can't do it with an I, and I won't connect. So you're going to have to do it with an L without creating a 2x2. Two two. Uh, sorry, not an L, an S without creating a 2x2. Two two. And that's going to have to be like that, I think. Um, I can't see another way of doing it, presumably, given that this puzzle's been tested to death. There won't be another way of doing it. So I really like that one. I think that's incredibly clever. And let's move on to the next one. Um, we will move on to, what's this one? It's, oh, it's Shy, shy again, <laughs> under the pseudonym Shy Purd. And the puzzle is, oh, Cave, I love, uh, Cave, I do know. So again, I shouldn't be too slow at this one. Um, in fact, I know the next one as well, Shikaku. So we'll, we'll probably do two more. Um, shade some cells so that the shaded cells are all connected orthogonally by other shaded cells to the edge of the grid. And the remaining unshaded cells form one orthogonally connected area, the cave. Clues cannot be shaded and represent the total number of unshaded cells that can be seen in a straight line, vertically or horizontally, including the cell itself. So let's have a look at the example here. You can see there are several principles to understand in cave puzzles that are incredibly important for solving them efficiently. The first is note that all of the black cells in this puzzle are connected orthogonally to the edge of the grid. That's very important. The second thing to note is that all the green cells are orthogonally connected with each other. Now, if you look at the seven clue here, you can see that horizontally it sees five green cells and vertically it sees another two. So that's why its count is seven. The other tip I will give you for cave is if you look carefully at this grid, there is no two by two region within it, which is checkerboard patterns. And that's very, it, it, it follows from the rules, but it's something that unless you've done a lot of these puzzles, you might not appreciate. Um, and I'll show you why you can't have a checkable puzzle, a uh, checkable pattern after I finish this puzzle. Um, but let's have a go at the puzzle first. And it's in the right place. Fantastic. So uh, like we did with the other one, why don't we just green in all of these squares immediately? Now that, that, and that, I can see that's forcing the three. Um, What's that doing? That's forcing the six, I suppose. One, two, three, four, those two. That's forcing the four. So that's got to be green, I think. 
um, this six is now absolutely forced one two three and it in fact is finished so that's got to connect to its friends that five is now done dum 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 um, the three is done actually don't create a checkerboard don't create a checkerboard don't create a checkerboard don't create a checkerboard there we go I remembered at last when I do caves I normally forget that rule don't create checkerboards don't create checkerboards this four needs another cell so that's now forced this seven is that no that's not done four five six it needs another one and then it needs to see something and we mustn't create a checkerboard um, now what do we do I don't know is the answer oh how do we get the greens to connect to their friends that's got to come through this gap now that can't be four. that can't now we've got to cut oh, this is beautiful this is a beautiful puzzle this five is now forced this six is now finished I think yes it is so that five needs another one that that's we have got to get into this part of the grid that's forced that's forced that's four. Oh, this is so clever it's so clever isn't it four here okay so I have to think I have to take two vertically there otherwise that's not going to work don't create a checkerboard don't create a checkerboard so up here what's going on we've got to take that one we've got to count oh I've got to take that one for the top clue um, that six is done ah that six is done there we go so that's so all of those turn green and that turns right so we finished it don't know 211 don't know what I was meant to do that one in let's have a look um, oh bobbins <laughs> it's so mean if I talk I can't I can't get any of these times I just I'm just too slow um, let's let's go back to the puzzle where is the puzzle going to be in fact let's start the puzzle again that's probably gonna be easier isn't it um, and let's just quickly outline what I did there if I can remember exactly what I did so the first thing I did was to put green cells in the middle of these in fact let's let's deal with the checkerboard thing quickly first imagine that was the pattern uh, in fact I'm going to do it somewhere else because I want to show you without numbers really imagine this was the pattern now the point is that we know that the greens need to connect to one another via an orthogonal sequence and however we do that hopefully you can see that we're going to force the isolation of a black cell and if we force the isolation of a black cell we can never connect this black cell anymore to the edge of the grid so it's a slight you know you need to visualize this a little bit imagine connecting these greens together you're always going to loop the black cell and if you loop the black cell the black cell can't get out of the loop and to the edge of the grid and that's why you can't have a checkerboard so all of this is you, you can't have a black in the middle for exactly the reasons we've just been talking about you need the blacks to get to the edge of the grid so you get here and you can see we've got a couple of three clues which are basically gimmies actually I didn't spot the middle one but that one is a gimme um, and now this six has only got a count of three so far so however we draw it it's always going to take this square which fixes the four above it so I could see that that fixes this four with this and look at this green region here it needs to connect to its friends so it, there is a connectivity question driving it through here and finishing the five off now the four has the wrong count so needs another green and then we've got all of this checkerboard ability we can't have green here or we've got a two by two checkerboard can't have green here or we've got a two by two checkerboard and that that forces a whole load of extra black cells um, we've got to connect this green up so it's got to come out here uh, now what do we do next oh this seven needs another cell and therefore that's forced and now look again this green definitely needs to connect to the bottom of the grid so that's forced and that forces um, oh did I get the count wrong no I didn't uh, that forces this to be impossible or it would create a line of six vertically and break the five clue and again we still need to get this green into the bottom this is a really clever puzzle really beautiful um, that six is now done this five is not done this five is not done this these twos need this all of this stuff on the left needs to connect to its friends so that's forced we can't obviously attach the two to a big long green region so all of that is forced finishing the two off so you can see how you could you could do this puzzle really quickly I think if 
if you weren't me. <laughs> um, now this 4 needs to take 1 in both directions. And this, oh, this was a nice step. This 6 at the top, even if it took the whole of what's left of the top row, it would only collect 6. So it needs to take 1 below it. And that finishes the 6 on, so this 6 off. Look, that's now got 6 that it sees. Forcing that, forcing that. This 4 is now done. And this was the other little tricky bit. You have a choice here in terms of how this 6 moves. But if it ever takes this cell, it will also take this cell in order to reach a count of 6. And that breaks the 2, which now sees 3 green cells. So you can never take this one. And that forces the shape of the 6. The 2 is now done as a result of that. So all of that turns black. And we can't isolate a green. So that's how it finishes. Very, very beautiful puzzle. In very, really like that. Shy. Yeah, fantastic. Ah, now we've got Jovial now. Now Shikaku. I will... I will tell you that when, when Nikli, the great Japanese website, was up and running, Shikaku was the one, th the one type of puzzle where I, was, I, was, I probably was in the top few of the world. Um, I don't know why, it just appeals to the way my brain works. Um, but I will try and do this one quickly to see if I won't talk for this one. I won't talk. Um, divide the entire grid into rectangular regions, each containing exactly one circle. A number inside a circle indicates the number of cells in its rectangle. And the time we have to be is 145. So let's have a quick look at the example puzzle. So you can see the green lines are dividing the grid into rectangles. We have one black cell in each rectangle. Um, in fact, most of the Nickley puzzles I saw didn't have black cells without numbers in. So that's something I will have to think about. And you can see that, you know, this 5 is just a string of 5. This 4 is a string of 4. But a 4 could equally be a 2 by 2. Squares count as rectangles in this puzzle. Um, anyway, let's have a go. Let's go. Oh, it's in the wrong place. No, bobbins. Oh, it's really in the wrong place. I don't know how to... I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. Can I... Oh, hang on. Maybe I can display. Am I going to have to fix the size small? Cell size small? Yeah, I'm going to have to do something like that. I'm really sorry about that. And I'm going to and I'm going to re and I'm going to reload the tab. If I reload the tab though, will it just Right, if anyone's timing me, I'm t I'm starting now. Um okay, is it line drawing? I think it probably is. I'm not meant to be talking 3 6 9 6 looks like it does that. That 8 4 5 6 7 8 it's like that. Oh, 35 5 times 7. That's going to be massive. Something like this. Uh, seven is going across there. Don't know. Oh, 12. That's going to be the next thing we look at, probably. That's going to do that. That five is forced vertical. I'm not very good at controlling this. That's forced. That's forced. That's forced. Eight. Uh, the two. Ah, uh, yeah, I can see that. That's doing something like that. One is that just a is that just that in that case that's all forced I think that oh okay I've finished it okay not a very good time I don't know I don't know I don't know when I actually started that so hopefully someone can tell me but I'm a bit rusty and I wasn't quite clicking in the right places like you can see I've managed to draw loads of lines let's erase the answer and I explain how to do these so. A very good place to start with this actually probably is the 35 and think about what possible rectangle could that be well it's not going to be one a one by 35 rectangle in this size of grid so it must be a five by seven rectangle and actually straight off the bat you could therefore see that shape that's probably where most people should start i mean i start here because i see the 14 and i'm just so used to thinking that's two by seven and i can see where it goes it's going to have to, you know, it's penned in. So I can see that that forces the nine to be a string. Oh, six, seven. I'm not, I think that's the right length. I'm not sure. Um, three, six, nine. This six is now forced. It's got to be a two by three rather than a one by six. The eight is now forced. I can't remember how many down this comes, maybe to there. Um, the next, I think, big deduction where you can just fill in the seven is the 12. Look, 12 is quite an awkward shape in this. Um, not quite in this size of grid, but you can often have a 1x12 or a 2x6 
or a 3x4. Now here the 2x6 isn't just, there's just no room for it, so it's got to be a 3x4 and it's got to be that. And that pens in the 5 look, which now has to be a vertical 5, forcing those shapes at the top. The 6 can fit in if it's a rectangle. Um, this 8, there's no room for it to be a 1x8, so it's a 2x4. But there is a question, and I ask myself this question, which way does it go? It's going to take those cells, um, although actually it could have taken that one. I didn't think about that as I was going through. Uh, but, what, but what I did think about, which comes to the same point, is how are we getting in this puzzle to this, this cell here and this cell here? Because there's no, there's no vertical connection that's possible. The three will never reach it. The two will never reach these cells. And no other stone can get there, can get to this square. So the eight must take this square. And once the eight takes this square, we now know the shape of the rectangle that it must be in. So that's forced. The two forced. This one, we don't know how big it is. Yeah, and what I didn't realize, you can't have these in Nicolae, but a one cell region is forced to be here. Now, how are we going to attach this one to a black cell in a rectangle? Well, it has to be the three. How are we going to attach this cell to a rectangle? Well, it has to be the four. And then you can see it's just a straightforward closure to finish the grid. So quite an interesting puzzle type, Shikaku. I'm a big fan of it. I hope we see more, more gaps using Shikaku. Um, yeah, and I probably stop there. Gosh, it's another hour long video. Um, but I hope, I hope those of you who enjoy the pencil puzzle genre enjoy this one. Um, and yeah, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.